Folks say life is a song. For some, that means a ditty. For others, a dirge. But at the holiday season, we all sing a carol. A Christmas carol. Hey everyone, welcome back to Every Version Ever. My name is Jonathan North, and today's episode is the kickoff to the Christmas season here on the podcast. Today we're going back into my podcast archives to an episode I made last year for iHeart Movies. My friend Mark Brown is joining me, and we're going to be talking about an animated version of A Christmas Carol starring Tim Curry. I'd never heard of this one before Mark introduced it to me, so we had a lot of fun talking about it. To begin with, I guess, why don't you tell us why you chose this one? <laughs> why I chose this one? This is the uh, 1997 animated A Christmas Carol with Tim Curry. You know, the, the animated musical one? You know, there's only one of them? That's <laughs> the one I picked. <laughs> and uh, why did I choose this one? I, I, I saw it years ago, and I liked it a lot. And it was during a period, it was, it was a December, I don't know, two or three years ago, where I decided to watch as many Christmas Carol adaptations as I could, you know, similar to what you're doing on your channel. Yeah. I think this one was prob- was one of the first ones that I watched, and I, 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 did, I was familiar with the story before, but it's been a, it, had, it, it had been a long time, so this one kind of brought every, all the memories back to me. And this one is an adaptation that I know a lot of people have given bad reviews on. Like I've seen blogs where it's like one of the, the worst of the five <laughs> worst five adaptations of a Christmas Carol, and like I I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think it's enjoyable enough. I like the DIC animation style. I like Tim Curry as Scrooge. And before this is over, you and I will break out singing Santa Zooty Zoot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had never seen this one before. I I knew there were several animated versions. I don't think I realized that one starred Tim Curry until you said you wanted to do the animated one that starred Tim Curry. And actually, there were quite a few big names in this one. Yes. Tim Curry, Michael York, Ed Asner, Jody Benson had a song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even Whoopi Goldberg was in this, Goldberg which I was not expecting. <laughs> I don't know who thought, you know what, Whoopi Goldberg, British accent. I, I did not recognize her voice when when the Ghosts of Christmas Present started talking. Like, because I'd seen some pictures of who was who all was in the, like, the characters. Before yeah. I watched it, I saw some pictures of the characters. So I guessed right away that the Ghost of Christmas Present was going to be Whoopi Goldberg because I'd never seen a version that had a black female as the ghost of Christmas present. I was like, well, that's Whoopi Goldberg, obviously. But then when I got to the scene, she started talking. I was like, no, that's not Whoopi Goldberg. Who is Whoopi Goldberg place? So then I started going through the IMDb page. I was like, that is Whoopi Goldberg? (laughs) Because it did not sound like her at all. Yeah, the first time I saw the movie, I also was shocked afterwards. I'm like, wait, that that was Whoopi Goldberg? (laughs) Yeah. She, She did a good voice, I guess. She did good at masking her own voice. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I would say she did a good accent, but she did a good Mm -hmm. masking of her voice. And as far as the accents go, technically I think she had one of the best of all the people who were putting on an accent. Because like like, the ghost of Christmas passing, you can just tell. (laughs) (laughs) He had a very bad Cockney accent. (laughs) So bad. I'm totally British I am yeah no that one that was not good and i i'm pretty sure that i think her name is kathy suchi yeah and she's like actually a voice actor yeah I, she did a bunch of voices including that one but if you're gonna judge her voice acting don't look at that character <laughs> because i know she's far better than what she did for that character Definitely. i think she was the voice of kanga Mid the Pooh films, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I know she's in a lot of things. So she's it was a very recognizable name. I I can't like 
pick out a specific character, but she does a lot of side characters and background characters. So I recognize her as someone who's very prolific in voice acting. Yes. But I know she can do a lot better than <laughs> this one character that didn't turn out that great. <laughs> as soon as she started talking, I'm like, yep, <laughs> you're not British, are you? <laughs> yeah, no. That was very obvious. <laughs> what did you think of the addition of um, a dog for um, a pet dog for Scrooge? I thought it was weird. <laughs> because... Scrooge is not supposed to care about anyone or anything except for himself. So why would he have a pet? <laughs> I just thought that was very strange. I think I'm guessing that they put it in as sort of a thing to appeal to kids because there seemed to be a lot of things in this that were very much geared towards kids rather than all ages. Yeah. Like everything was very not scary. <laughs> Like, a lot of versions will, they'll, like, be genuinely scary, specifically for Marley's ghost and the ghost of Christmas future, but the, these were not scary at all. I, mean, I, I, did, think, I did think the ghost of Christmas future was, I mean, scary by the standards of this movie, as well as, like, ghost of Christmas present when she became old. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I get, I get your point. I... I didn't think, like, I've seen a bunch of different versions, and, like, I've seen ones that can be genuinely terrifying, so I didn't find these at all scary. Maybe maybe a little kid would find at least the Ghost of Christmas future to be scary, but I really don't think anybody's going to be scared of Marley. I don't know. I didn't think he was scary in the slightest. I think about Marley, like, I he, I think Ed Asner also did a good job with that, because I didn't yeah. recognize his voice either. Yeah, he was he was good, and I didn't really, yeah, I didn't recognize who he was until after, and I looked up IMDb and was like, oh yeah, I guess I can see that. Like the, going back to the the dog, um, because like I said, this this was a version I saw like back when I was getting into a Christmas Carol, and it, it had been a while, so like I it didn't really hit me that oh Scrooge doesn't have a dog, you know, in the books mm -hmm. or any other adaptation, so like I didn't think much about it. But um, it's very interesting he named the dog Debit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it's fitting considering what he does. Yes, and Frank he gave Frank Winkle, Frank Welker a job. Yeah, yeah, I, I could tell that that was Frank Welker. He just his animal noises are very distinct. Yeah. It's like if you need an animal noise, yeah. call Frank Welker. <laughs> as um, Cratchit. Jody Benson was Elle, even though he literally mm -hmm. like one song, and that was it. Yeah, I she did not have a big part. ask her about this movie if like, <laughs> they ever meet her. <laughs> they talk about Ariel, maybe Thumbelina. By the way, let's talk about Belle <laughs> <laughs> from Christmas Carol. Oh, it's, her part is so small that I wonder if she'd even remember having done it. That's, that is true. I would hope the song would have stuck out, but I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, I can't even remember how the song went. <laughs> no, that's what I was thinking about all the music. Like, the music is very unmemorable, unless it's memorable for a bad reason. Like, <laughs> like, I, mean, I, I just love Santa Susie. <laughs> <Studios. laughs> that, that song was so weird. It's like, I what on earth are they singing about here? I never quite saw such a sight as Santa Susie. It was bizarre. Like, and then to Scrooge, like, gets so merry about it. <laughs> it was weird. I liked it, it a lot. <laughs> the music, I don't, the music, I don't think any of it was, like, bad, bad. No, no. But, I, I think, like, the lyrics were, like, you know, the song they sing while, when he goes to the diner at the beginning of the movie? Uh -huh. I think that, that writing was, I liked the writing on that. I thought the lyrics were pretty well, well written, and, like, the the rhymes went mm -hmm. uh, the, the um, what do you call it the meter I think that of all the songs that's probably the best one yeah but the rest other than Santa's sooty suit <laughs> I I am having a hard time even thinking of what they were like I don't really remember them they were kind of unforgettable or they were forgettable not unforgettable 
<laughs> but like the song between Young Scrooge and Bell, to me, it just felt like they were trying to replicate the scene from Muppet Christmas Carol, the one that has now been cut for some reason. I don't know why. Like, gone. No, that, I, so I like that, the When Love Is Gone song. I don't know why they cut it out. I think that's a great scene and a great song. See, but like, Jane, like, just act. Like, look, looking at, at Belle in that scene is just mm-hmm. amazing acting. Yeah. And I felt like this song, uh, what is it, Cross the Bridge With You or something? <laughs> I don't remember exactly what it was. It just felt like they were trying to do that again. But not as good. I'll cross the bridge alone, or something like that. Something like that. There was a bridge involved. That's what I remember. One of the songs was that. Had a song. There was a song at the very beginning, something about Christmas, and I don't remember it at all. I remember that Cratchit was sort of humming it, and he got yelled at for it. Um, there was a song in the end. There was a song at the Christmas party, I think. That's like, one, thing I, one issue I have with, like, like we know there's a lot of Christmas Carol adaptations, right? But mm-hmm. there are also a lot of musical Christmas Carol adaptations. And I'm thinking, how many different times can you make up a new song about the same <laughs> part of a story? Like, there's only so many Fezziwig songs you can write. There's only so many Bell mm-hmm. and when, when Bell splits up songs you can write. There's only so many... No, thank you very much. Songs you can write, and like, and now they're making because now, like we talked about recently, they're making a new one with uh, Will Ferrell, another mm-hmm. musical adaptation of Christmas Carol. And I don't know. It all depends on who's writing the music, because some are better than others, and very few, I feel like, will really stand the test of time. That's true. I guess my point is literally. Every adap- every musical adaptation will have the same. will have a song in the same scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. My favorite musical adaptation is the Alan Menken one, the one that you know they made a film TV version of Kelsey Grammer. I think that's my favorite musical. Okay, I haven't seen that one yet. That's really we good. Might have to talk about that one one of these days. Yeah, but yeah, I think my favorite musical version is my favorite version, which is the Muppet Christmas Carol. Okay. I just love that do you, one. Do you, do you like Scrooge with Albert Finney? Scrooge, it's another musical one from 19... Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Okay, that's another one. <laughs> There's a bunch that I want to see, but I'm holding off until I'm actually going to review them. Yeah. So there's ones that I know they're like the big name ones that I just haven't gotten to yet because I, I want them to be fresh when I yeah. review them. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm definitely going to look out for, for your review of that one. <laughs> I want to hear what do you think of the songs. Yeah. Anyway, I guess going back to Tim Curry's version. That's one thing we didn't talk about. What do you think of Tim, Tim Curry as a Scrooge? I liked a lot of what he did. I didn't feel like he was that great of a singer in this one. What did he sing, though, besides two lines of Santa City <laughs> The end, the end song is where I really noticed it. When when he wakes up and he's getting ready to go to the Cratchits, he has a song there, and I just did not think it was that great. Not not just because of like the writing or anything. I just thought that he didn't do that great of a, so- a job singing the song. Well, that shows how much I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like I said, the very unmemorable. A lot of the music. This was my favorite. Adaptation of A Christmas Carol at one point in my life. I don't know about now, but I mean, I think one of the reasons I liked it a lot was I liked Tim Curry as Scrooge. Mm -hmm. I think I liked his delivery, especially like when when he saw Scrooge as repentant and he saw him like regretting the past and saying, what was the line kept saying? Um, Not at all or that's all or whatever. Like you could feel the weight of sadness in his voice and I think that's what I liked about this version of Scrooge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think for most of the characters, I don't think I really felt much, but Tim Curry did have a few lines where you felt the character. A lot of times with, and I noticed this with a lot of 
kind of cheap animation. It just feels like they're saying the lines because they're paid to say the lines. You don't really get a whole lot of actual feeling out of it. But I did get some of that from Tim Curry, but not too much from anybody else. For the most part, I felt like they were really just reciting the script because they were getting paid to to say the lines. And that's not always a really bad thing. But it's more memorable when somebody can say lines that make you feel something. That's true. It is the the, the, the whole delivery of it. And what I find interesting is apparently Tim Curry played Scrooge again um, in like 2001 on stage, like the stage version of it. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's the same musical version that um, I don't know if it's a musical version Alan Menken wrote, but it's an, it, it's another adaptation. A stage play adaptation, and he played it in London. <laughs> so okay. he, he <laughs> I knew that he'd done a stage version, but I didn't know what what the music was or anything. Yeah. But he, I feel like his voice is perfect for a Scrooge character. Yes. So I just kind of wish that he'd have been able to do it, if not another better animated version, even the live action version, and just. I really like him, so it would have been nice to see him do something that would stand the test of time more than this one will. <laughs> Imagine this one's the one that gets remembered in like 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of doubt it. It'll get remembered, but only as one of the footnotes in a list of these were all the different versions of the Christmas Carol. And yeah, not- like I said, I've looked at many blog posts where people have reviewed multiple Christmas carols and they always put this at like the bottom five. Like, yeah. That bad. I don't think I would do that. I think for me, this one wasn't horrible. It was just very mediocre. Yeah. I, I could, I could agree with you on that. I think one of the things that gets me also is the, DIC, you know, this DIC style of animation that mm-hmm. I like that animation style. It just, there's something happy about it. And, like any any movie from DIC animation that has that style, it just like perks me up. Did they do? Maybe you don't even remember the show. There was a show, like late nineties, early two thousands. I think it was called like Liberty's Kid. Liberty Kids. Yeah. Did they do that show too? I think so. Yeah. Because this reminded me of that. Just the, yeah, the yeah. character styles. I love Liberty's Kids, man. <laughs> I don't remember a whole lot of it, but I remember watching it all the time. I watched it when it came out, and up to the, up to this day, I still watch it whenever I can. Like, yeah, um, I haven't seen it in ages. Animated like, show that teaches history, and not just history, but American history. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, we watched it when it was on, but I don't. I haven't seen it since. I don't know when we when it was. Think about or something. That's when it came out. Probably that's yeah. that sounds about right. But yeah, I, th- I think the IC animation was behind that as well. It's that it's that style. Uh-huh. It's it's kind of I don't want to say that it's cheap animation because it's like higher end for like direct to video animation. I'd say it's not detailed, but it's colorful and the the line the lines of the characters are like drawn with precision, shall I say. <laughs> Yeah, the the animation style, you can tell that they're on a much tighter budget than Disney, but it's better than some other direct-to-video things that I've watched in different versions of, like, Alice in Wonderland. I've seen some that are really not that great. This, this has a better budget than that. I totally believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather watch this or um, your, uh, The Legends of Oz, Dorothy Shrewdrum? <laughs> Um, probably this. <laughs> cool. At least we agree on that. <laughs> I, that was another one. That's just like, it's not horrible, but it's very mediocre. Yeah. But I think I still liked this one better. But I think I I probably like A Christmas Carol better than The Wizard of Oz anyway, yeah. depending on depending on the version. True. Who's an actor that you'd want to that you personally would want to see as Scrooge who hasn't done it yet, be it animated or live action. I was just thinking about this the other day. 
Now I've got to remember his name. I can tell you mine in the meantime. Uh, my uh, go-to guy who, like, I just, I feel he's just perfect for Scrooge, Christopher Lloyd. I want to see Christopher Lloyd as Scrooge. Oh, yeah, he'd be good. Especially now when he's all up and grumpy and that voice of his yelling at the kids and all that. <laughs> I, I'd love to see Christopher Lloyd as Scrooge. Yeah, he'd be a good one. Even if, even if it's only a voice character, voice actor performance oh yeah how could i forget jeffrey palmer Who's that? you know who that is no. his main role that i know him from was he was on a british comedy show as time goes by okay I'm we looking, watch that every saturday on pbs i'm looking him i'm looking him up now looking at his uh picture i think i agree with you <laughs> he'd make a good one yeah I'm I'm kind of surprised he hasn't played Scrooge before because it just seems like a natural fit for him. Yeah, maybe he's applied. <laughs> Who knows? But I just I've seen him in a few things enough that I I kind of know the way he can act, and he's sort of in as time goes by, he's kind of a lovable grump. And I feel like that's the kind of person you need to be in order to play a really good Scrooge because you have to convincingly go from being a, a, a horrible grump to somebody who's like reformed and nice by the end. And I just feel like he would be perfect for, for doing that. I think that's one reason I wasn't a fan of Michael Caine as much as I love him as Scrooge and Love the Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. Somehow I felt, I don't know, I, I felt he transformed from grump to you know lovable too quickly but it's also been uh it's been a while since i saw the movie too so mm -hmm. maybe my opinion would change i don't know i haven't watched it since last year so i haven't really thought about it in that context <laughs> but i don't think i ever thought of thought anything bad about his performance i guess one thing that i was going to say about at least the Ghost of Christmas present, I did enjoy the way that they had her age because that's something that I don't think many versions really do or yeah. at least do well, noticeably. Them, but not a lot, yeah. Yeah, and I did, I did like that they actually put the effort into making her visibly age instead of just either not doing it at all or doing it very subtly so that you might not even notice. So I feel like some versions do it more subtly than others. And I liked that they actually had that be a thing. Like you could see her aging at certain points. Yeah, that was interesting about the way they animated her character. Mm -hmm. But would you agree with me that this is your favorite animated version of a Christmas Carol? <laughs> um... I'm trying to think of how many animated versions I've actually seen. I haven't seen that many. There's a 2001 version with um, Simon Callow. He voices Scrooge. And it has Nicolas Cage in it and Kate Winslet. That one's really weird. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I think I know which one you're talking about because I came across it when I, I was looking for this one. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> Oh, wait. What am I saying? I, this, no, this is not the best animated version. Mickey's Christmas Carol is the best animated version. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was too, too busy thinking about like straight, direct adaptations instead of like somebody putting their own spin on it. All but, right. I, I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it in a while, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that would have been better than this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it definitely is. It's, the music is a lot better, more memorable. The characters are way better. Scrooge McDuck. Yes. Yeah, I, that one I actually just watched like two days ago because my family was all here for Thanksgiving and I, I go, got Disney Plus recently and I took my the one older nephew who's old enough to actually think about these kind of things downstairs to watch something and he chose to watch this like he, he specifically said he wanted to watch mickey's christmas carol so i just watched that one recently i haven't seen it in 
years. It's so, good. It's really good. It's probably the best animated version I've seen. But, like I said, I can't think of very many animated versions that I've seen yet. I know you there's more motion, out there. you consider motion capture as animation, you've seen the oh, right? Yeah. That one I have mixed feelings about. I definitely like, like this version better, I think. <laughs> I probably do, too. Even though I really want to like that one more. I like what they did with the technology in that one. But I don't know. There was a lot that I did like about that one, but there was a lot that was just... I don't know. The script was great. Like The script was almost word for word the book in some places. But it, it just wasn't as good as I think they thought it was going to be. I think it was more technical prowess rather than yeah. bringing it all together. Yeah. And that's another thing when you start watching all, all these Christmas Carol movies, you start... You hear the same. You hear the. You hear the book in every version. Yeah. Almost. Are there no workouts? Yeah. There no whatever. There, there are some lines that like they have to be in the verse in whatever version they're making. They have to make it in there. It's not a Christmas. Grave, grave in the grave of you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think as far as like straight adaptations, I suppose this probably is the best one I've seen. Because uh, I'm not like I wouldn't say that. Mickey's Christmas Carol is as straight an adaptation could be. I don't know. Because the, they do they do take some liberties, and of course they put all the Disney characters in there. So, But if if I'm going any animated version, Mickey's Christmas Carol wins by a mile. <laughs> all right. We can agree with that, I guess. <laughs> well, I guess that's probably all I've got, unless you have something else that you want to say. No, that's pretty much it. Yeah. We'll have to talk about another version sometime. I don't know if we'll have time this year, but definitely next year. I am interested in watching that other musical version. Yeah, I'm down to talk about that one next year if you want the 2004 one. Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that'll be all for today. Do you want to let people know where they can find you? Well, you can find me on my blogs, the animation accommodation. Well, I have a new URL now. It's theanimationcommendation.com or my live action Disney project at my live action Disney project at wordpress.com. You can also find me and Jonathan as writers of the Road Scopers. Okay, well, thanks for joining me, and I guess we'll see you next time. See ya. Thanks again to Mark for joining me. If you want more from him, I'll have his links in the description below. Next time we're going to be diving further back into my archives and putting together a compilation episode with four shorter reviews I did with Rachel Wagner long before I ever started podcasting. Rachel is just as big a fan as I am of A Christmas Carol and she's introduced me to a bunch of random versions over the years and we're going to be talking about four of them in the next episode. So thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on Every Version Ever. Merry Christmas! See the Christmas snow falling Don't it tug at your heart While you're in this space Better change your ways Now's the time to start Ah, Random acts of kindness Random acts of kindness Just in case it's you who ends up